I'm here today with my good friend Andy Weaver. Andy grew up in the Amish community and he is going to be showing us today how to use a cross cut saw to cut down a tree and we we don't have a lot of real big trees in this in this little uh fort, not that fort. we want to cut down no, no. especially yes. exactly and so yep. tell us a little bit about what we're going to be doing so we're looking at a saw that nobody knows how old it is um, it could be 80 years old it could be 150 years old wow. uh, my guess looking at it my guess is it's around 100 years old and I grew up Schwarzen Tuber Amish, which means I grew up very conservative, very primitive. We didn't have any power tools or chainsaws and things like that. So for my first 30 years of life, this is the only way I knew to take down a tree. Wow. wow. I don't even know how sharp this thing is. It, I tell you, it's been resting for about nine years now. Because <laughs> <laughs> I found something that makes a little more noise and cuts a little better too. But I think it'll be all right. So... <clears throat> Yeah, I'm excited to try it. Like I said, I haven't used it in probably nine years. These are, the they're not very white, so the narrow ones are good for trees like this, firewood, they're light and everything. The one that we used to cut down big, like logs, trees that with big logs, it was like this wide. So it's real wide, it's kind of hard to get it started, but once, once it, uh, you get it started, it's just lazy in there. It's a little thicker on this side than this side, so it stays loose. and yeah, if they're if they're sharp, you can two guys that can work together. Yeah, they can uh, they can cut down a tree pretty fast. Wow. wow. I mean, it takes a I don't know if you can, a tree that you can cut down in three minutes with a chainsaw. It'll probably take you five minutes with this. Okay, not that much longer. Yeah, that is a tree like this. Yeah, a tree like this is a sharp saw, and two guys that are in fit. And you know, if if you think about cutting down trees with this for a while, you'll you'll be in shape. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm sure. A tree like this, you can take down pretty fast, but it's the big ones that you get a lot of drag inside the tree with that cross cut. It takes longer. Yeah, it takes a little while. But even a big tree like this, you you take it down around, you know, probably half an hour or so. You take it down. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. there's still people today that use these cross cut saws, even though they they could technically use chainsaws. <clears throat> Because uh, they got new cross cut saws that are super fast. Really? Yeah, and people choose to use them out in the bush. Wow. I mean, they are an antique, but they do work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pretty well. I don't know. This tree is not dead, so it, it should work all right. All right. Assuming the saw is still sharp. It and feels, you, and you were saying bad. it's easier to uh, cut a, a tree, a living tree down than some, one that's oh, yes. dead already. Yeah, a living tree is green and a little softer. Yeah. If they're dead, they start drying out. You, you know, it's still not bad, but it's harder. It's just like a chainsaw, you know, yeah, it gets yeah. a little harder. Yeah. Yep. So, well, you ready so, for this? Yeah, maybe Are you, you in can, shape? You, uh, hopefully we're I'm gonna in shape. We're going to find out what your lung capacity is like. Yeah, we're going to find out. Now, I want to give you an idea of how someone might, in a standard way, cut down a tree with a chainsaw. You could use this technique with a cross-cut saw. It obviously takes a much more time to do it than we are going to do in this video. But this is called the open face cut. This is one of the most common ways to cut down a tree. So what you do is you have... You cut out a wedge, roughly about maybe a fifth to a quarter into the tree, and the top cut, you will come downward, roughly on a 50 degree angle, and then you'll come back in from below that on a 40 degree angle, and this will make a 90 degree wedge into the tree. And like we said, it's somewhere around a fifth to a quarter of the way into the tree, and this will produce what some call the bird's mouth. And the back cut, then also, which is also, by the way, called the felling cut, the one that will come back through and cut the tree down, is going to be a horizontal, meaning along the horizon, so a straight cut coming back through. Now, you're generally going to make, want to make that cut roughly one or two inches above the central point of the bird's mouth. And by the way, you never cut all the way into it. You want to leave a hinge, basically... Uh, maybe maybe somewhere around, it's said, about a tenth of the thickness of the tree in there so that as it begins to fall down, it, it will go on that hinge and it will just not fall any which way. It will fall along the hinge the way you want it to go. And by the way, when you're cutting it down, you don't want to be directly behind the tree. You want to be off maybe on a 45 degree angle and you want to run off on a 45 degree angle when the tree begins to fall. All right, so you'll want one hand on this and the other hand will put in here especially as long as we're not into the tree to kind of stabilize it. And we try to, you go down a little lower that we're flat. There we go. And just start cutting. Oh, that sounds like it's 
like it. Wow. My brother and I used to get mad at each other doing this. <laughs> like we'd go to a wedding on a, like on a Thursday and we'd be up until one o'clock in the morning and the next morning go out, cut down trees. And we were not functioning well, I can tell you. Wow. And we'd get mad at each other. <laughs> Somebody actually called the cops on two Amish guys one time that they were cutting down a tree. Is that right? They thought they were fighting. <laughs> you want to back up a little bit? Because I've got a tree behind me. It's hard for me to back oh, okay. up. Thank you. Tell me when you're out of breath. I'm all right so far. See, that's, it's going pretty good. Yeah. All right, why don't we rest a little bit? All right. We should have cut in the other side too, but you know what? That thing is gonna wanna go that way, I can see it. You're gonna go this way? We'll see, we might be able to push it. Yeah, you keep an eye, because this can be dangerous. Man, I wish we had a wedge. Yeah, that would have been good. Uh-oh. Yeah, he's a pinching. pinching. Just push that thing a little bit. Oh wow. Let's see if we can get something in there. Well, we got that out at least. I think it'll be good. Are you almost, are you off? It seems... Oh wow, yeah. We're close, huh? It's just fighting us. Yeah, we better don't keep cutting. Better not keep cutting? No. So you want to put, try pushing? There we go. Watch out. That's good. <laughs> to be honest, yeah. that seems only slightly slower than a chainsaw, it, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a cut like that. It's so convenient, you know, you're comfortable. Yeah, that's pretty fast. Let's do this one, huh? These handles, you can actually take them off. So if you get stuck in a tree, and it wants to pinch on you, just take the one handle off, and you pull it right out of the tree. Or in this case, I just put the one handle upside down because we had to get underneath and cut up and we didn't have enough space for that. So there's a little pin. This goes on like that. And there's a little pin that comes through. Get it in there, yep. So, yeah, so you take the handles off and you just got a piece of steel. Yeah, when times get difficult and things are hard, um, when you run out of gas for your chainsaw, Crosscut would be a nice thing to have around the place, quiet, go out there and make some wood. <laughs>